So we are in a series we, uh, called Storyteller. And it's, it's actually, that's one of my favorite title slides ever for a series. When I saw it from a distance, I thought it was a comic book thing, and I was really excited. And then I realized it was just normal books. But I think now comic books are popular enough to be called normal books, don't you? Some people are like, no, they're not normal books. But that's okay. So we're, we're talking today about building materials. And we're going to, if you want to go to your Bible, we're going to be in Matthew 7, 24 through 27. Pretty, like standard parable that is told a lot of times, used for reference a lot of times, even by non-Christians. Uh, but I just wanted to address this, one, because it was on the schedule for me, and two, because I really, really like try to live by this parable. It's very important to me to live by this. So I want to start by giving us a definition for the word foundation, because these verses talk all about foundation. So I have this definition here. The foundation is a body or ground upon which something is built up or overlaid. So it's not just something that holds something up. It's, it's laid over it. Your body is laid over the foundation. It becomes a part of it, and it's built over it. So the question is, what is our foundation? Is Christ our foundation? Is everything in your life, your entire body of work, built up on Christ? And what happens when it's not? So let's continue to Matthew 7, 24 here. It says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Now, I hope you noticed that I purposefully highlighted the word and because that's key in this, because we need to talk about that. But first, we're gonna focus on the listening part. That means that we're spending time in God's word, that we're listening for him in response to prayer or in prayer time. God's word is the blueprint for our building. If we're building on a foundation, the, the Holy Scripture is our blueprint, okay? It, it's, what the, it's how we know what to do. All right, it's from, if you're in construction, the foreman will look at the blueprints every time and check back to them almost every day to make sure everything's okay. Now, some of you know, some of you don't, that I coached football for seven years. And, and I will tell you that I would have players who would like look at the play on paper and then do something totally different when we got out on the field. And I don't know if they panicked or if pride got in the way and they're like, I don't have to go that way. I'm much better going this way or I can go any way I want. Nobody can tackle me. And then when their helmet is rolling down the field 10 yards away, I may have chuckled inside a little bit as long as they weren't hurt. But they didn't follow the blueprint. And when you don't follow the blueprint, and when you don't even read the blueprint, or don't listen to the blueprint at all, or you disagree with the blueprint, bad things happen. So we have to be very careful, because following the plans lead to our purpose. They yield to our purpose. And the purpose leads us to a destination. And that destination is eternity and heaven with Christ Jesus. So let's look at Matthew 4.25 now. It says, Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the wind beats against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on the bedrock. Now, I want, I want us to pay attention that he just doesn't say storms. He describes a couple of things here. Okay, We have rain that comes in torrents, first of all. That's downpours. That's heavy rain. That's problems that happen in your life that just pummel you, come out of nowhere. And there's almost nothing you can do about it. But there's also floodwaters rising, maybe as a result of those rains, but maybe it's a slow, steady. This issue is building and building and building and building. And eventually, before you know it, you're underwater. Now, both of these things, sadly, and the wind, are very familiar to us here in Cedar Rapids. We've all experienced the sudden storm of last August. Now, I wasn't here for the floodwaters back in 2008, but I've heard many stories and seen many pictures and seen the lines on the wall and the restaurant. There's a reason they keep those lines on the wall, so they remember. This is what happens 
when the storm comes. This is where I need to be above when the storm comes. So do we remember that? Do we put lines on our walls? Do we rise above? Do we listen to Christ? Or do we just, I don't even care about that. I don't want to mark that. That's a bad memory. We have to be aware of the storms. We have to be ready for the storms. But then this is the cool, this is my favorite part of the whole thing because of the word that's used here. It won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. Here's the thing about, it doesn't just say on rock. It says bedrock. Bedrock is used because it's not just normal rock. It's buried. It's unaffected by the storms at all. It may not even be aware that the storms are going on. It may be sleeping in a boat. The bedrock is unaffected. And so when we build our foundation on that bedrock, we also become not unaffected, but anchored in that storm. Now I want to talk a little bit about some science, because I was a science teacher, so I want to talk about erosion. When we're exposed to that storm, erosion will occur. Okay? Erosion will most definitely occur when we're exposed. There's really nothing we can do about it. Even those of us who are solid, the best Christians of us, are still a rock above ground. We're not bedrock. So when the rains come and the torrents come and the floodwaters come and the wind beats against us, we may lose a little bit of ourselves. We may have some issues. But if we're attached to that bedrock, it might be a little bit better. See, some of us aren't attached to Christ at all. And sadly, maybe some of us even, even here in this room. But you have a way to get there. I'll talk about that in a minute. But we're just sand. We're just a house built on sand. Sand just blows right away, washes right away. It's not attached to anything. It erodes quickly. Rock will erode slowly at least. You're a little more solid in your faith. But bedrock, like I said, is not exposed at all and won't go anywhere. Now here's the cool thing though. This is about recovery. Sediment when you blow away, if you become sand, if you lose part of your walk, if you turn away the other way, you can become rock again. But you can only do that under pressure. You can't just magically come right back to where you were. Now, I can't say that Jesus can't make that miracle happen for you, but it's most definitely a miracle. But if Scripture tells us anything, which is, by the way, the blueprint that we have to follow, if we really want to do this right... We're going to have to undergo some tension and pressure to make this work. Something you need to know is that if we avoid the pressure and tension God provides us, and we take the easy way, then our foundation is never formed in Christ Jesus. Sand just doesn't turn back into rock on its own. It has to go under many trials, many pressures, heat, Things have to happen to it that I would imagine, if sand was living, it wouldn't want to go through. Things happen, have to happen to us for us to get back to that foundation that we probably don't want to go through. But we have to persevere. We have to endure. So it builds character. So it builds hope. Because faith is nothing but hope fulfilled or hoping in something that will be fulfilled. We have to have that pressure. Now here's the thing. Jesus, in, right in these verses, in 26 and 27, gives us a warning. He says, But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who built a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Now, like I said earlier, that crash may be gradual. You may just erode away slowly. Or there may be a different kind of crash. But here's something about that crash that you need to know. Because if we look at that verse, you see how it says the word hears? You can hear his word and still crash. In fact, there used to be this podcast that I was interested in, and I was only interested in it because there was this gentleman who used to be a pastor, and now he was an atheist, 
who had a podcast who spoke against Christianity. He knew the Bible better than every single person who called in to refute what he was saying. He heard God's word. He read the blueprint. And then he said, I don't agree with the blueprint. But because he read it so thoroughly, he was able to fend off every, all the naysayers that were Christians and called in. And he was actually able to anger some of them and therefore prove his point. Because they weren't tied to the bedrock. And he eroded them. But he was going to crash. And so can we if we only hear his word, if we don't follow it, if we don't do it. If we look at the cornerstone and then say, I'd rather build somewhere else, but I'll keep checking this cornerstone out. It looks nice. What good does it do? The other thing is this. God never says that the storms won't come. In fact, he says the opposite. He says the storms will come. He never tells us that. So if we think that we're going to live this perfectly beautiful Christian life and nothing bad is ever going to happen to us, then we're, we're kidding ourselves. Can a bodybuilder get muscle without the pain of lifting weights over and over and over? Can you get smarter without studying? Can you just magically get smarter? That'd be sweet. I would love that. <laughs> I think most people would. But God never says the storms won't come. There's a purpose in the storm. There's a reason it's there. That pressure to take us from sand to rock so we can firmly attach to the bedrock that is Jesus Christ. We need that. Now here's the thing that's scary. Sometimes the crash isn't all the way until the end. Your structure is holding up. You are doing great. Everything is amazing. And then you die, and Jesus said, you never knew me. Because all you did was hear. See, the devil is an expert at making you feel comfortable. And making you feel like you're doing everything right. In fact, there's a scene in God's Not Dead, if you've seen the movie. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you do. It's a little cheesy at times. As you get into two and three, believe me, it gets more cheesy. But the lessons are solid in the movies. And there's a scene where this gentleman who's rich and has everything, he's not a Christian, says to his grandmother, who's been a Christian all her life, but she has Alzheimer's and dementia, and he can barely talk to her, and he's upset with her, and he says, how can you believe? Look at you and look at me. I make all this money. I'm successful. I have everything I want. And she just says, in the middle of her Alzheimer's and dementia, sometimes Satan lets you have, have everything you want in your jail cell just so you never leave. And then the crash happens at the end. Don't wait for the crash to happen. Start building on the cornerstone now. Because your foundation is not just your base. The definition said, a body or ground upon which something is built up or overlaid. It's what things come from inside of you. Your foundation is the seed of your vine. It turns into that branch. It's who you grow out of. Jesus Christ is who you grow out of when you make that choice. And your vine bears your fruit. The evidence that your branch is Jesus, that your seed is Jesus, that that foundation is healthy, is how much fruit you bear. Because a solid cornerstone and foundation can hold together and restore a broken temple, a broken person. Now I wanted to show you today, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to come over here and grab some materials. Since we're doing, you know, building materials, I figured I'd use some. Now handiwork is nowhere near my spiritual gift. So even me... Uh, doing part of this. I was so excited to be able to do this. It makes me feel like, like a bigger dude. But uh, 
I don't even know where, what this tarp is. I just found it in the trustees room. Thank you, trustees. Uh, if you're wondering where that tarp is, it's right here. Um, <laughs> so we are like these buckets, okay? Now, this is the wrong kind of holy, if you're thinking that was where my demonstration was going. We all have holes that we need filled. We have a choice what we use to fill our holes. Now, if we choose, the earth offers us millions and millions and millions of things. Millions and millions of tiny things that are amazing. This is millions and millions of tiny things. And they are amazing. They're shiny. They have different colors. If I accidentally get it in my mouth, I'll never forget. Okay? So this is awesome. But when I try to fill myself with it, it just falls right out the bottom. And I, I can't even keep it. I can't hold on to it. And so I would have to keep filling and filling and filling and filling. And no matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to do anything with it. Now, the worst part is, if I want to share with somebody the gifts I have received, and I'm, I'm like, hey, come check this out, and eventually I'll reach in, there'll be nothing for me left to share. I'll be empty. And there's nothing I can do about that. Now, there's millions of things there. But in Jesus, we get one type of thing. We get the rock. We get the bedrock, we get the cornerstone, or the gravel from by the parsonage. Either way, <laughs> either way, we get the rock, the solid foundation. And even when we have holes in our bucket, we don't lose Jesus. And if the evidence that I have Christ as my foundation is in my fruit, all I have to do is reach out and take one of these pieces and share it with somebody else. And guess what? God offers free refills. Amen. Amen? He'll fill it right back up for you. All you have to do is go back to the blueprint and look again and follow again, and he'll give you more rocks. But you get to share this with people. And you don't ever forget it because it's always in you. Foundation is not just something you stand on, it's something that stands in you, and you get to stand in it. We need to remember that. So speaking of that, some things I want you to remember before the band comes up and leads us in worship on how we should build our lives on Jesus. First, there will be storms. There's absolutely nothing we can do about that. The key is how we interact and react to those storms. How will we let Christ lead us through the storms? Will we freak out and yell at him like the disciples did in the boat? Or will we take what Jesus has taught us and be part of that storm and learn from that storm? So that next time we put up a sail and we get to move when the storm comes instead of sitting still and getting chopped back and forth. The second thing you need to remember is that a solid foundation will always, always result in fruit. So if you're sitting in your house by yourself and you're not talking to anybody, you're not communicating with anybody, you're not growing, you're tired of reading the blueprint, it's getting kind of old, remember that there's a reason the Great Commission exists. The reason the part of the commandment is to love others and God, not just yourself. Everybody else has to be a part of it too. You see, this is really about quality over quantity. You can have a million little things and lose them all, or you can have a few amazing pieces of Jesus and keep them forever. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to share your word today. Lord, I pray that everybody in this room remembers that as they're going through their week, if you're not the first priority, if you're not the foundation in every single thing they do, then it's just like sand falling through holes. Let us not glow in the temporary, 
but grow in the permanent. Help us to remember what you did for us, the love you gave us, and the grace you apply to us every single day when we forget that you are our rock, our foundation, and that we are to build our lives around you. Amen.